University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, Boris Johnson once thought he'd insulted me by calling me a swat, but it's rather a treasured accolade for the two teams competing in this second round match for a place in the quarterfinals. Only one of them will go through for the losers. It'll be the final good night. Now, the last time we saw them, the team from Newcastle University put themselves on minus five with the first question. But when they remember that the object of the exercise is to try to get things right, they took the lead and managed to keep it throughout the entire match. At the gong, they were ahead of their opponent, Sheffield Hallam University, by a margin of 170 to a mere 40. With an average age of 29, let's meet the Newcastle team again. Hi, my name is Jack Reynard. I'm from Leeds and I'm studying medicine. My name is Molly Nielsen. I'm from London and I'm studying medicine. And here's their captain. Hi, I'm Jonathan um, from Newcastle upon Tyne, studying for PGCE. Hello, my name is Adam Lowry. I'm from Sunderland and I'm reading chemistry. <laughs> Playing against them, the team from the University of Southampton, who prevented Cardiff University from getting much of a look in during their first round match, finally seeing them off by 280 to 40 making them the second highest scoring team at that stage of the competition. With an average age of 20, let's meet the Southampton team again. Hi, my name is Juan Paulo Ledesma. I grew up in Hampshire. I'm originally from the Philippines and I'm studying medicine. Hi, my name's Andrew Knighton. I'm from Fareham in Hampshire and I'm also studying medicine. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Lorna Frankel. I'm from Wiltshire and I'm studying natural sciences. Hello, I'm Niall Jones. I'm from Chatham St Peter in Buckinghamshire and I study English. OK, let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. What's being described? Depicting 49 trees, 55 dogs, 41 ships and boats, and 623 human figures... Newcastle Reynard. The Bayeux Tapestry. Correct. So you get the first set of bonuses, Newcastle. They're on the importance of tea. Firstly, for five points, under certain circumstances, there are few hours in life more agreeable than the hour dedicated to the ceremony known as afternoon tea. These words begin which novel by Henry James? Its title figure is Isabel Archer. Let's not like that starts with a ghost story, doesn't it? Did you know anything else about yes, me, uh, Turn the screw. No, it's the portrait of a lady. Secondly, for five points, my hour for tea is half past five and my buttered toast waits for nobody. In which novel by Wilkie Collins does Mrs Catherick write a letter to Walter Hartwright that ends with these words? Hey. I think that's a woman in white. Woman in white? Woman in white? Correct. The world may go to pot for me so long as I always get my tea. This sentiment appears in Notes from Underground, a novella of 1864 by which Russian author? It's Dostoevsky. Is it Dostoevsky? Uh, Dostoevsky? Correct. Ten points for this. Which chemist gives his name to the law stating that the pressure exerted by a mixture of perfect gases is the sum of the partial pressures that each gas... Newcastle Reynard. Dalton. Dalton is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on a metal ore, Newcastle. Hydrargyrum is a former name for which metallic element that occurs chiefly in the ore cinnabar? Mercury. Mercury. Correct. Which scarlet or red pigment was originally made from powdered cinnabar? Its name derives ultimately from the Latin for worm. Yes. Vermilion. Yeah. Vermilion. Correct. Named because the inside of her sarcophagus was covered with cinnabar powder, the Red Queen was discovered in 1994 in Palenque, a ruined city of which civilization? Mayans. 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 Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Known as Ra in ancient Greek and Itil or Etil in Tatar, which major European river rises in the Valde Hills near Moscow and discharges into the Caspian Sea? Southampton Jones. The Volga. The Volga is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on physics, Southampton. In the theory of wave-particle duality, which French scientist gives his name to the wavelength 
associated with a moving particle that's defined as the Planck constant divided by its linear momentum. Uh, Louis de Broglie. De Broglie. De Broglie? Correct. Called a matter wave by de Broglie, what name is more commonly given to the approximation of the trajectory of a particle moving through space like a wave, denoted by the Greek letter psi? Uh, wave function. Wave function. Correct. The statement that the probability of finding a particle in a small region with volume V is proportional to psi squared times V is attributed to which German-born scientist? One of the winners of the 1954 Nobel Prize for Physics. Heisenberg? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Heisenberg? No, it's Born, Max oh, Born. Okay. Ten points for this. At its best, her poetry is strong, personal and unforced, with a metrical cadence that is unmistakably her own. These words refer to which poet who died in London in 1894? Her works include Remember and In the Bleak Midwinter. Southampton Jones. Christina Rossetti. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on the Palace of Versailles, firstly for five points. What name was given to an antechamber used by Louis XIV at Versailles? referring to the distinctive oval window in one wall. In French, the term is also used symbolically for a royal household or court. Um, no. I don't know. Royal household, so... Um, uh... Was it named after the oval window? Yeah. Oriel. Oriel? I don't know. Yeah. Oriel? No, it's a bullseye or oeil de boeuf. <laughs> Which leading French landscape gardener was responsible for the design of the gardens at Versailles in the 1660s? His other commissions include the redesign of the Champs Elysees and the gardens at Fontainebleau. I wouldn't say Tuileries. Is Tuileries like the name of a uh, garden, or is that? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Tuileries. Yeah. Tuileries. No, it's André <laughs> Le Nôtre. Finally, for five points, in which ornately decorated room was the Treaty of Versailles signed in 1919? It's flanked by the Salon of Peace and the Salon of War. Hall of Mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. Hall of Mirrors? Correct. We're going to take a picture around now. your picture starter, you'll see the abridged contents page of a notable work of non-fiction. Ten points if you can give me the title of the work. Southampton Ledesma. Uh, ca das Kapital. No, you can buzz one of you from Newcastle. Newcastle you know. Nielsen. The Wealth of Nations? It is The Wealth of Nations, yes, by Adam Smith. <laughs> so you get the picture bonuses then, Newcastle. I want you to identify three more notable 18th century works from a section of their table of contents. This time, for the points, I'll need both the title of the work and its author. Firstly, and note that an appearance of the title has been redacted. No, it's not it's not fiction. Oh, not fiction. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Emile Rousseau? No, it's Fielding's Tom Jones. <laughs> Secondly... I'll come on at you. Mary Wollstonecraft. Yeah. Sorry, Chase. Yeah, I like it. Come on at you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, nominate Maynard. Uh, the Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. No, it's a vindication of the rights of woman, as you heard earlier, by Mary <laughs> Wollstonecraft. And finally, for five points, substantially truncated, title and author again here, please. Was it Gibbon? No. Uh, but Gibbon, Fall of the Roman Empire? Oh. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Fall of the Roman Empire by Gibbon? I'll accept that. Yes, it's the decline and fall of the Roman yeah. Empire by Gibbon. Right, ten points for this. Answer promptly. If the atomic number of tungsten is 74, what is the sum of the atomic numbers of the three elements whose symbols spell the word pwn, P-W-N? Newcastle Noble. 225. Anyone like to buzz from Southampton? Southampton Jones. 95. No, it's 96. Ten points for this. In the mid-12th century, Albert the Bear became the first margrave of which historic state? In 1356... Newcastle Reynard. Brandenburg. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on Scotland, Newcastle. 
The population density of England is 413 people per square kilometre. Wales is 149, Northern Ireland 135. What is the population density of Scotland? You can have 10 either way. Uh, 80. No, I can't accept that. It's 68, in fact. Secondly, which Scottish council area has a population density of nine per square kilometre? It includes Britain's northernmost city. Is that, is that in Westshire? No, is it Caithness? No, I don't know. Is it Caithness? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What's it called? Oh, what's it called? Just can't think. Let's have it, please. Uh, Caithness. No, it's Highland. And within Highland, the county of Sutherland has the lowest population density, with 2.3 per square kilometre. This is a level similar to that of which US state, the most sparsely populated after Alaska? It is Montana. It's Wyoming. Wyoming. Correct. Ten points for this. Born in 1906, the Polish-American physician Albert Sabin gives his name to an oral vaccine approved for use in the US in 1960 and used to confer immunity against which... Ah, in Southampton Mitram. Polio. Polio is correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses, then Southampton on the Mahabharata. According to legend, the sage Vyasa dictated the Mahabharata to which Hindu god, a son of Shiva, he is traditionally worshipped before any major enterprise and is also the patron of intellectuals. Ganesh? Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Ganesh. Ganesh. So, what do you think? Vishnu? No, he's not a son of Shiva. Okay, fine. Um, I don't I'm pretty sure Ganesh is a son of Shiva. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Ganesh is... Oh, Ram's the monkey. Can I just say... Ganesh? Ganesh? Correct. <laughs> Which revered Hindu text forms an episode in the Mahabharata and incorporates basic teachings of the Upanishads and Samkhya Yoga? It was the subject of a commentary by Mahatma Gandhi. Is that the Bhagavad Gita? Oh. Good oh, yeah, yes. yeah. 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 Do you want to yeah. nominate Knighton? Bhagavad Gita. Correct, yes. <laughs> and the Bhagavad Gita takes the form of a dialogue on the battlefield between Prince Arjuna and which incarnation of the god Vishnu? Rama? <sighs> Rama? Rama? That's Krishna. Ten yeah. points for this. Which work of 1781 presents the concept of transcendental idealism? Newcastle Noble. A uh, critique of pure reason. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on terms used in astronomy, Newcastle. What term follows the word inferior to denote the passing of Venus or Mercury between the Earth and the Sun, marking the closest points to Earth in their respective orbits? <clears throat> Transit? No, it's conjunction. Secondly, as viewed from Earth, the point between the inferior and superior conjunctions at which the angular separation of Venus or Mercury from the Sun is maximised is known as the greatest what? Elongation? Yeah. Elongation? Correct. What term is used to refer to a superior planet such as Mars reaching a location at its widest angle from the Sun in the celestial sphere as viewed from Earth? Maximum elongation? No, it's opposition. We're going to take a music round now. If your music starts, you'll hear a piece of classical music. For ten points, tell me the title of the ballet from which it's taken. Southampton Frankel. Swan Lake. Swan Lake is right. <laughs> it's one of the works referenced by Susan Sontag in her 1964 attempt to define the concept of camp. Your music bonuses are three more classical works mentioned in Sontag's notes on camp as illustrating Camp's style and sensibility. I just want the name of the composer of each. Yeah. 
Puccini? No, that was from Norma by Bellini. Oh. Secondly... from Rosen Cavalier by Richard Strauss and finally Okay, it's this one Verdi. It is Verdi, <laughs> yes, it's the anvil chorus from the Observatory. Ten points for this. Which final two letters link the island birthplace of Stokely Carmichael and Brian Lara? The son of Lancelot and Elaine, the SI unit of electrical capacitance... Newcastle Reynard. AD. AD is correct, yes. <laughs> we get a set of bonuses on compromises in US history. Firstly, for five points, which US state gave its name to a compromise of 1787, which determined that all states, regardless of population, would have the same representation in the upper house of the federal legislature? No, 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 it's, it's the Constitution. It's not the case the Constitution, it's like Virginia or... Yeah, yeah. Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. That's Connecticut. Five bills passed by Congress to defuse a confrontation between slave and free states following the Mexican-American War are known collectively as the compromise of what year? 1850. 1850. Yeah. 1850. Correct. Which territory and future state gives its name to a compromise of 1820 that regulated the westward extension of slavery across the American continent? Missouri. Missouri. Missouri is correct. Ten points for this. One of the trois grandes dames of Impressionism, which French artist is noted for her paintings of domestic life, such as the... Newcastle Nielsen. Mary Cassatt. No, you lose five points, such as The Cradle. Though never commercially successful, she outsold Monet, Renoir and Sisley in her lifetime. <sighs> no one wants to bus from Southampton? It's Berta Morisot. Ten points for this. About 70 miles long, which river of northern England has a name that rhymes with words meaning a band of painted decoration or sculpture, an involuntary action known as sternutation? Newcastle Noble. Tease. Tease is correct, yes. Right, this set of bonuses are on the ancient Greek geographer Strabo. Living in an age without accurate maps, Strabo attempted to give a visual idea of regions and territories by likening them to familiar shapes. Which large peninsula did Strabo liken to an ox hide whose neck parts fall over into the neighbouring Celtica? What? Is that not Italy? Italy? Yeah, Italy. Yeah, no, it's the Iberian Peninsula. Secondly, which peninsula of the Greek world did Strabo compare to the leaf of a plane tree? Peloponnese. 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 Correct. Finally, which large island did he liken to a triangle? Oh, Sicily. 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 Sicily's correct. Ten points for this. What is the seven-letter common name of the brightest star in the constellation of Scorpius? The name is thought to... Newcastle Noble. Uh, Antares. Antares is right. Your bonuses are on the names of chemical elements and words that resemble them in spelling. In each case, listen to the explanation and give both words. Firstly, a noble gas and a jargon or slang used by a particular group or class of people. Argot and argon. Argot and argon. Uh, argot and argon. Correct. Secondly, an element of the nitrogen group and a consequence of divorce, now known as maintenance. Alimony and antimony. Correct. And finally, a transition metal that occurs in a natural state and the meaning of ori in the word origami. Uh, fold and gold. Correct. Ten points for this. The chief European rival of Britain in 18th century India, which country was left with the enclaves of Chandanagore, Carrick, Newcastle Noble? France. France is correct, yes. 
Right, your bonuses are on Southeast Asian history, Newcastle. From the late 19th to the mid-20th century, what name was given to the Federation of Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia under French control? French Indochina. French Indochina. French Indochina? Correct, or the Indo-Chinese Union. And secondly, what abbreviated two-word name is generally used for the coalition formed in May 1941 to seek independence for Vietnam from the French Empire? Viet Cong? No, it's the Viet Minh. The Viet Cong were founded later. The name of which European city is given to the accords that formally ended the first Indochina War in 1954 and effectively divided Vietnam along the 17th parallel? London? Berlin? Berlin? No, they were the Geneva Accords. We're going to take a second picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a promotional still from a film. Ten points if you can give me the film's title. Ah, uh, Southampton Ledesma. Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Correct, yes. <laughs> that won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature in 2006, making it the first example of stop-motion animation to win the award. Picture bonuses, three more stop-motion films that have been nominated in the category. Simply give me the title of each. Firstly... Oh, that's Coraline. Yes, yeah. Coraline. Coraline is correct. Secondly... Oh, Amal Amalia? Malaysia? What? Malaysia? It's something like that. I've, I've seen it on it's Netflix. Amalia. <laughs> oh, wait, which one is it? <laughs> so Otherwise, I'm just going to say that. So, Amalia? No, it's not precise enough. It's Anomalisa. Oh, okay. And finally, oh, my fantastic Mr. Fox. Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Work this out before you buzz. If x equals pi radians, what is the value of sine x plus cos x plus tan x? Newcastle Noble. Minus one. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the novelist George Eliot. In the mid-1850s, Eliot spent time translating the ethics of which philosopher who died in 1677? Her translation remained unpublished until 1981. Spinoza. 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 Correct. What was George Eliot's first full-length novel published in 1859? The title character is a carpenter in love with Hetty Sorrel. Anything? Do you know any George Eliot apart from Middle March? Mm. George Eliot apart from Middle March? It's not Middle March, it's through his past. Yeah, uh, sorry, we don't know. It's Adam Bede. In 1860, Eliot travelled to Italy and later published which novel set in Florence in the late 15th century? Again, I don't know. It's his past. Sorry, we don't know. It's Romola. Four minutes to go, ten points for this. Plains, Mountain and Ravies are three species of which distinct... Southampton Jones. Zebra. Zebra is correct. Your bonuses are on electronics now. In electronics, for what does the letter C stand in the abbreviation CMOS? Capacitor? Or cathode? I don't know. Let's have it, please. Capacitor? No, it's complementary. What two letters of the alphabet denote the two complementary types of transistor in CMOS technology? They form a current gate for electrical control. P and S? P and S? That's P and N. And finally, used in computer logic circuits, the acronym FET, F-E-T, stands for what kind of transistor? No, it's not that. It's something really weird, but I can't remember. Come on, let's have it. Fixed energy. No, it's a field effect. Transistor. Ten points for this. In a calendar year, to the nearest whole number, a hebdomadal event occurs how many times more frequently than one that is annual? Uh, Southampton Frankel. 52. Correct. <laughs> a set of bonuses for you on the collection of, of the Prado Museum in Madrid. In each case, the artist is a figure of the Northern Renaissance. Firstly, born 1525, which Flemish artist's works in the Prado include The Triumph of Death and The Wine of St Martin's Day? Flemish artist. Could be Bosch. Uh, if it's Death, uh, it's probably Bosch. 
No, it's Bruegel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the Descent from the Cross is a work by which artist born in Tournai in about 1400? 1400. 1400. Uh, 1400. No, it's 5,000. No, it's 5,000. Um, 1400s. Van Eyck. Van Eyck. No, it's Van der Vaden. And finally, born in Brabant in about 1450, who painted Extracting the Stone of Madness, The Adoration of the Magi Triptych and The Garden of Earthly Delights? That's, no, that's yes, Bosch. That's that is Bosch. <laughs> Ten points for this. In 19th century literature, Phineas Finn and Phileas Fogg were both members of which London Gentlemen's Club? Ah, Southampton Jones. Reform Club. The Reform Club is right. 15 points for these bonuses. They're on English cities. In each case, name the city from the present-day local government entities that it borders. Firstly, South Tyneside, Gateshead and County Durham. Newcastle. Newcastle. Newcastle? No, it's Sunderland. Oh. Second, Walsall, Sandwell, Dudley and South Staffordshire. Mm, South Staffordshire, though. Mm. Come on. Birmingham. No, it's Wolverhampton. Finally, Leeds, Kirklees and Calderdale. Bradford. 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 Correct. Ten points for this. Which four-letter word links a leading academic and professional publishing company, a wise person in history or legend, and an... Newcastle Noble. Sage. Sage is right. <laughs> Your bonuses are on 19th century literature, Newcastle. In each case, give the title of the novel that refers to the character described. Firstly, Sir Willoughby Patton, the dashing and arrogant title character of a novel of 1879 by George Meredith. Do you know? Come on. Do you know? No, we don't know, sorry. It's the egoist. Prince Mishkin, the generous but unworldly title character of a novel by Dostoevsky. <laughs> the Idiot. Correct. Finally, a scientist named Griffin, the subject of a science fiction work of 1897 by H.G. Wells. Uh, the Invisible Man. The Invisible Man is correct. Ten points for this. In analytical biochemistry, what biopolymers are stained using Kumasi blue? Southampton Ledesma. Lipids. No. <laughs> Newcastle Lowry. Proteins. C proteins is correct. You get a set of bonuses now on islands of the River Thames. Pharaoh's Island at Shepparton was given to Lord Nelson following his victory in which battle of 1798? Battle of Nile. Battle of the Nile? Battle of the Nile? Correct. And at the wrong, Southampton have 130, Newcastle have 215. <laughs> well, who knows, Southampton? You had a good run there towards the end, but uh, it's not enough, I'm afraid. We should have to say goodbye to you. Newcastle, many congratulations. We should look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals. Congratulations. I hope you can join us next time for another second round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Southampton University. Goodbye. 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 It's goodbye from Newcastle University. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>